the top part of the hair, I'm starting to get the texture, but I know I need to hollow it. So before I do the back, I'm going to do a cut. And so generally what I indicate to students is somewhere behind the ears, it's like you're taking a whole kind of skull cap. You're gonna to wanna to be able to get your whole hand inside. So it's gonna be something like that that you're gonna to wanna to cut out. Now, when you're starting to cut, you're gonna cut into, you'll, you'll feel the newspaper. So I use the feddling knife and if you hit newspaper, just cut a little bit lower. And you wanna be careful not to like make it a mess too much because you're gonna to have to put this back together. So take your time, go slowly, put some pressure onto it. And it's like carving a pumpkin in a way. You want to feel the separation. So I'm cutting in the paper now. I can feel that. Not quite there. When I'm getting close, I'm going to yank it open. So you don't want to distort it. There it goes. Aha! Now sometimes you hit the pole when you're cutting. So you, you see my pole um, was there. So just be aware, be mindful of that. Now, this piece that I cut, I wanna be very careful because I, I need to put it back later. All of this newspaper that you're taking out now is gonna go into the garbage can. So you'll pull all of that out. And we're gonna take it off the, we're gonna take it off the post. Now, if your clay is still really soft, you're not gonna to wanna to take it off the post, okay? If somebody's holding the board, it's a little easier to do this. And so if you can run a knife underneath, that make it easier. Just spent several weeks on this, so you wanna be really careful. Don't screw it up at the last second. Be calm, take a deep breath before you do it. I've loosened it up there. Now I'm gonna take it and let's see if I can twist it. There you go. Do you see it moving? When I first did it, it didn't wanna move. Okay, so got an assistant here. And just slide it right up off the board. Okay, so I'm, I'm taking the, the post out now. Uh, one thing you can do is you can put a little, just a little chunk of clay under the chin if it's front heavy, okay? And that'll keep it from tipping. You don't want it to tip over because it's gonna mess. I've had people actually drop these on the floor and that's not a good thing to recover from. I'm back on the banding wheel and this is gonna be a little bit easier to get in here. All right, so again, I'm taking all this newspaper out now as I do this, I feel my head is a little soft. It's not too bad. The dryness, it should be kind of leathery hard. If it's still super, super wet, then you're not ready to hollow yet. But we've been working on these for three weeks, so I, I do think that they should be done. I've got a seam in the back here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's where I put the slabs together. So when I'm hollowing out, I need to pay attention to that. I'm going to cut, this part is going to be where I reattach the other part. So be really mindful of what you're cutting. I, I had a little excess sort of where the neck was. So I'm going to take some of that out. And also now is when they, they kind of fall forward. So be gentle. I can feel it kind of wanting to move. All right. So there I got that chunk. So do you see how it's kind of a little wobbly? I want to make sure that this thing doesn't fall. All portion of clay under the chin, just when I start hollowing, I'm going to use the loop tool and I'm going to start by doing the chin and the cheeks. So I want to go to the far end because that's where all the weight is in the front. If your hand doesn't fit in or that tool is too uh, fat, you can also use the ribbon tool. And I'm going right on that rent because I have like a little ledge there that was left when I put slabs together. So I want to get rid of That's the other thing is you're in here trying to get rid of air bubbles. And I don't want to pop a hole. So this is like where my nose is. So I got to be chill. This is about as far as I can go there.
Couple things, I have taken out this much clay. I wanna make sure that in my mound of clay that I don't have any newspaper. And then I wanna mound it together because this is clay I can reuse. So I'm gonna take that and pound it into a block. I'm gonna put that away that I can reuse it. I have taken out a ton of clay. I haven't hollowed the base and I'm gonna do that later. I have a thing of clay under the chin so it doesn't fall over. And I got a little thin down by the neck and so I reattached some clay there. One of the things you gotta make sure is that the clay is hollow or it's gonna blow up in the kiln. Hollow means about one inch thick. And so this is a good use for the caliper. You can actually literally um, measure. Okay, you can see my wall, about three quarters inch. And then I wanna go into a couple parts. I wanna check up here in the forehead. How thick is the forehead? Okay, so I'm just right at one inch, so I'm okay. I wanna check the chin. How thick am I at the chin? That tends to be the one that people forget. Okay, so I'm pretty good, because I have a little hollow in there. I don't know if you can see it, but I have a, a little deeper area there. So you gotta go slow, because you don't wanna pop any holes, and you also have to go through and make sure you get all your areas. I still have a lot of clay right up in here. So I'm gonna do just a little bit more hollowing, and then I'm gonna slip and score. It's kinda of nice to do it all in one sitting. There's usually one or two heads that blow up every year. So please don't be that student. You wanna make sure that you actually hollowed and that you measured with your caliper. So when you get to the hollowing part, give yourself at least a good half hour, 45 minutes or an hour, and use the caliper, actually measure, and check, as I said, check the chin, check the forehead, check the cheeks. Those are the three areas that tend to have too much air bubble. Um, also, if you have a lot of hair, um, a lot of hair, this tends to be more difficult because you're gonna put the hair on and then you do this texture like you probably saw in my time lapse. Now I'm gonna have to go back and redo the texture. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hollow this thing out, make it a little more beautiful. So one of the tricks that you can use um, is a fork. So ask your parents first before you um, go and grab a fork. Clay is non-toxic, so um, you don't want to eat it, but it's not going to make you sick. If there's some on the fork, you just go wash it real well. Um, if your parents say no, you can come borrow a fork from class. All right. What you're doing here, and again, don't poke through the head, is you're, if there's any air bubbles left, you're trying to just poke them through. So it's just, nobody's going to see this because it's going to be on the inside of your head but you're basically coming through and allowing any air bubbles that may or may not be still in there. Better safe than sorry, right? The base will be towards the end because I like the weight of the base. It holds it up for me. Just take the time to go in there with that fork just in case there's any air bubbles. Do some in here too. And it's best to do this hollowing and slip and score it all in the same day because you don't want to have to deal with this later. The clay, once you start to hollow it, it's going to dry a lot faster because now you don't have any paper. The mass of the clay is a lot less, so the water will evaporate quicker. I'm making my own slip, as you know, just a little dry clay, a little water, and slather it up real good. You can actually use the fork if you want to. Right, I want to make sure this is really good, so I'm going to slather it up again with some slip. Slip is our glue for clay. She goes on. Go over it again with a needle tool just because it's going to get it a little bit more. A little deeper, make little notches. Okay, when you put this back on, you want to make sure you don't crush your head, okay? It's soft. And if it's too soft, 
wait an hour, wait a couple hours to go together and not, you don't want to have any damage after hollowing. So you got to go slow, be mindful of what you're doing and paddle a little, little, little bit just on the connectors. This week is pretty much hollowing and doing some, I did some of the details like the hair, eyebrows and things like that. Did some adjustments. And then I'd like to do one more week of adjustments because I think that's the final week is just when it really, they really get good. I mean, it might be good now, but it's gonna get better. Okay, try to lose your seam, okay? There, there's a seam, you see my seam right here? I wanna get rid of that. Do it now, get rid of it now. You don't have to deal with it or think about it. Sometimes I get some of the heads and they come and you, you see the seam still. It's all finished and it's like, you still see the seam. Some people add, um, you know, ponytail or, or whatever. You can do that if you want. So all that texture that I did earlier, I kind of crushed it a little bit. So, I don't know, when I'm doing these hairs, I go nice and slow. And if I don't like it, smooth it out and then just go back over it. I'm going too fast, you know. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to look like crumbs. That's going to make more sense. So I excavated a little bit of clay down towards the bottom. I want to sh indicate shorter hair towards the bottom. And I'm just using this wood rib to kind of integrate that. Now I'm going to have to smooth it out because I'm going to use this big brush to do texture. I'm using this quickie cleaning brush uh, to indicate shorter hair. and. It, if you have shorter hair, you could actually, some of you guys might even be able to use it, a brush like this, for the whole head. I have a couple of these in the classroom. So if you don't have one at home or you wanna borrow one from the class, you come get one. But if you wanna indicate sort of a shorter hair texture, um, I'm physically bouncing it pretty hard against the head to get that hair texture down there. I'm going to integrate some of this coming into that. And there's, you know, there's quite a bit of um, experimentation with the hair. You're going to have to play around with, you know, what does your hair texture look like? You might take a couple photographs of the hair. And on this side, I'm realizing just like on the other side is I'm, my neck is a little off. So I'm going to fix that now. I'm also going to hollow the base, as I mentioned before. I will be hollowing the base next week and doing my final details next week as we get to finish this guy up. You have to stand up, you kind of have to bounce it up against the, the head. I'm hitting my ear a little bit, so I'm gonna have to clean the ear a little bit. I'm hitting my shoulder a little bit. So that's a little bit like what that's gonna look like for right now. I'm come in with the sponge, kind of clean that up a little bit. And clean up the ear a little bit. This is where we're at right now. The little piece of clay under the chin is so it doesn't fall over. I've done the hollowing. I've got a basic idea of a hair. I've got a basic idea of ears and nose and mouth and kind of expression. 